You know, there's one great distinction between black folks and white folks. <clears throat> black people have the moral high ground. They do. Black people have them. When you do a comparison morally between white people and black people, you have to take away one thing, supremacy. Black people do not have a culture of black supremacy. However, white people do. So white people are narcissists, social, cultural, systemic narcissists is who we are because of our racism, because of the lies of white supremacy. How can white people have morality as long as we have bought into the lies of white supremacy. We can't. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In case you're new here, my name is Maren. And I'm Maureen. And now you guys, in today's video, we usually come across so many interesting videos, but this one was especially interesting because it is the palm colored people who are addressing their own people about white supremacy and racism, you know. They talk to their people and they come clean about what it is it does to them when they behave racist towards other people and how they act unfairly and what it takes from them. So this is coming from the own horse's mouth. Let's just watch this clip and then we come back and talk about it. Remember, if you have something to say, you can leave it on the comment section and let's have an interactive segment. So let's watch this and then we'll come back. Can we talk about how miserable white people are for a second? Like, you know that white people are miserable, right? Like, have you ever looked a white person in the eye, even if they're like a big mental health person? You just look deep down and you're like, brother, you are not happy at all. And truly, it breaks my heart. But one reason, I think, one of the main reasons that a lot of white people, a lot of us are really unhappy and miserable is because we lack internal congruence. Now, congruence is a concept we learned early in grad school to help people heal. And congruence is basically internal alignment. Values and actions are on the same page, right? Like we accept every part of ourselves. We feel peace, security in who we are, congruence. And no matter how hard you try, you can never find internal congruence if you're not congruent with the world around you. And how does that feel to know that black people have a moral high ground. How does that feel to know as a white person that you are sick, twisted, narcissistic, and immoral, highly immoral, and inhumane? I don't use the N-word. What are you doing to fight and dismantle racism that benefits you, white person? Nothing. I ignore it, I deny it, or you perpetrate it. Those are the three things we do. We ignore it, we deny it, or we perpetrate it. That's what most white people do. I hate to say it, but it's true. And that's why I say we're social narcissists and we have no moral high ground racially. We are sick, hurting people. Hurt people, hurt people. And we've been hurting a long damn time. We're hurting because of the disease of white supremacy. It's destroying white people from within. Look at the, the white nationalist party, the GOP. Not just them, all white people. But just as an example. Look at the GOP. They're batshit fucking crazy. They bought into so many lies and it all started with the great lie. The great lie of white supremacy. It all started with that. Everybody knows the GOP now officially is the white nationalist party. That's a fact. Matter of fact, you can look at a lot of the rhetoric that they spew and it's almost identical to what the KKK is spewing and has been spewing for many, many, many years. It's the exact same rhetoric. It really is. Once again, I'm asking white people to understand, you don't do this just for black people as an anti-racist. You don't do it. I, I do it because I, I care about humanity and I can't stand. I, I was bullied for many years. I can't stand to see people bullied. That, that's one reason I do this. It's true. But I'm not here to fucking save anybody except for white folks. Black people can take care of themselves. Yes, white supremacy creates victims. But don't think the only victims are black and brown and indigenous people. We are also victims as the people who are living this grand lie and this grand immorality of social, cultural, and systemic narcissism. The white people, you're hurting. Until you heal from racism, you're doomed to live an immoral and toxic life. I've seen it in my own fucking family. Don't tell me it's not true. I've seen it in my own goddamn eyes. Living under the lies of white supremacy makes you sick. Nobody's good enough. You're not good enough. You're living lies. And it's people like Donald Trump, the grandest narcissist of them all. That's why white people love Trump. And don't think it's only the GOP. It's also in liberals. Many white liberals are just as racist as the GOPs, just in a different way. So if you're not doing anything to dismantle white supremacy as a white person, again, you are the problem. And you're only hurting yourself by ignoring it. Believe that. 
if you're not understanding what's real and seeing reality and affirming what's true. So like white people who deny patriarchy and capitalism's negative effect and oppression of the world and genocide that's happening around the world, like that's incongruent with reality. That is going to have an effect on us internally because to deny what's happening in real time, we have to deny certain parts of us, certain emotions, certain thoughts that come up. And the more we run for that, the more incongruent and separate we feel, the more dissonance that comes, the more miserable we are. And a lot of times we're not actually dealing with our own pain and our own reality because we're all suffering under capitalism and white supremacy. Like it affects us different ways, intersectionality, but like it affects us white people too. You don't think a stormtrooper in the fucking Star Wars movies hates his life? You don't think he hates being bossed around all the time? You don't think poor white people living in the empire, like in a city walls, like in a Game of Thrones, like you don't think that they're miserable under it, even though they're not miserable the most? To be congruent inside, to not be miserable anymore, it takes accepting the realities of the world, seeing how those toxic systems affect us, and then moving to actually be congruent. Because deep down, humanity has goodness at its center. So yeah, white people, we're miserable because we're not congruent, because we're denying the realities of the world and thus denying ourselves. So guys, after watching the clip that we've just played you, we just want to know your opinion. Would you agree with them that black people are morally up upright than white people? You know, because as one gentleman here was saying, they need to be cognitive of what's happening around their environment. Now, how I would uh, term racism, in my own opinion, is uh, I'd liken it to bullying, the you know palm colored people bullying the darker skinned people because of their appearance and that is very interesting because you, when you look at uh, what happens in america let's just take the the case of uh cops for example and how they treat black people when you get pulled over the other day there's a video we were watching about um you know and this is the good thing about uh dash cams or are they called dash cams or body cams the ones that the cops normally body wear cams. exactly because these cameras never lie and there's one in particular we were watching the other day where two white cops a male and a female pulled over two black kids and without any you know they didn't have any or any reasons they didn't run a, you know the red light they didn't do anything illegal but they still ended up chasing them down and pulling them you know over so they complained with everything and in that video you could see how these two cops were really really harassing these kids but the kids were trying to comply with every demand and then the male cop ended up uh putting the driver the kid was driving in shackles and he, he was asking am i under arrest and the guy is telling him he's not under arrest they just have to run for the investigation and he stay the kid was trying to inquire what is this sir what is this about you know he did yeah, so they ran in legal checks in their car found nothing and then uh, the police officer was trying to force the kids to admit that there was marijuana in their vehicle and the body cams showed that they ran searches and they didn't find anything mm -hmm. now what these kids did after they were released they sued the whole entire department for $75,000 and it was awarded to them yeah but guys you know it's just us telling you but when you watch that clip that was quite scary because the way these cops were talking and the way he was patting the kid as if, do you have any weapons and he clearly told him he does not have any weapons no knife no guns and this and guy the officer had, was telling this kid right I'm now your mannerism you. it is making me scared of you and i will you know pew pew, I will pew, it, pew was, it was quite uh traumatic mm -hmm. and the way they talk to you know these black people when they are pulled over it's sort of you could like see some less bullying. than human exactly yeah okay i just say some not all some uh, palm colored Most. people most of them they're just big bullies exactly they're just big bullies that is how me i would term it i don't know how you would term this whole entire situation after hearing what you've heard yeah yeah and but the question you're asking yourself is what is it going to take for you to achieve social equality and social justice by black people leveling up financially I it's think not even it's about leveling up you know it's like telling someone who's in a, an abusive relationship don't provoke your partner they're still going to be to be no you're taking it that is not finish. what i meant oh i'm God. just telling you how it sounded when it came out of your mouth it's like telling someone who's in an abusive relationship don't okay, provoke what him. i meant by black people leveling up financially is Mm. I'll always use Israel as an example. You know, when you have that money, this white, 
farm colored people if they do anything to you you can have money to render them the real justice right now you know it is a fact if you, you <laughs> No, I still don't agree with okay, you. Although okay. I see I see what you're trying to say in terms of Israel, mm -hmm. but um still it doesn't apply but because we th I mm -hmm. asked what what has to be done it for you it, to it achieve just take those palm colored people themselves that being, is the answer. being acting right with themselves because that is on the, the black people's have. side <laughs> They've been trying to educate white people mm -hmm. and black people have no issues on their side. The issue comes from the palm color. Guys, people. can you imagine? I like I'll just say the truth. I don't even live in America, but can you imagine being black in America? As I normally say, being black in America is the most dangerous thing, the most mm -hmm. scariest thing because even the knock on your door, you have to be scared when you hear a knock on your door because you don't know if you're going to be unalived. Yes, and when you meet with a cop you have oh my i feel like black people are the only people who can really humble themselves because of white people mm. especially cops because they don't want to be unalive you know imagine nobody should have to live like, like that. that the other week there was a, a case that was trending of a black kid who opened the door he had a knock on, on his door went to open and was unalive and by a cop and he was a marine marine or a soldier he was in the army he was in the army and he got unalive because he was black he just didn't look right Mm -hmm. guys guys and then you know when this other gentleman says that white people are the most miserable people i can imagine why that is it's not easy to be a bully mm -hmm. it's not easy to be a bully feeling you know all kinds of ways all day just walk yeah sure you're gonna get your gratification when you do the one two three to somebody and they shrink in front of you because you're making them feel something. like it takes something from you in terms of humanity exactly you know there's this movie that uh, we used to watch called vampire diaries the way <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad comparison but go on well they, they're switching why well, guys please tell us if you agree with us i think palm colored people so the ones oh, who yeah, participate yeah, in that com in that sense the ones the one that are right that's the correct yes um, the ones who participate in racism acts and all that they switch off their humanity mm -hmm. i don't know if they'll ever switch it back on or what situation will uh, prompt them to switch it back on but these are people who switched off their humanity that is very true because for you to find the people who are speaking up against uh, racism and social injustice like these two gentlemen mm -hmm. for you to find someone like um Jen Elliot, mm -hmm. for you to find someone like Tim, uh, what is he called? Tim who? Tim Wise, mm -hmm. and they're palm colored people, and they speak against the what their own people do to and the black mind community. Mind you, they grew up with that system of being indoctrinated into the Believing systemic that, racism. Exactly. But yet, they brought themselves to a level where they could be able to unlearn the indoctrination mm -hmm. and start speaking against social and injustices. being human those are people they who turned on their humanity in vampire diaries they call it turning on and switching off your humanity right. so these are the palm colored people who have their humanity turned on mm -hmm. and the others who choose to ignore and continue thri thriving in the you know the system how it's meant to be exactly those ones have switched off their humanity because it takes a humane person mm -hmm. for them to realize what is wrong and what is right mm -hmm. for them to realize that someone needs to be treated a particular kind of way it takes someone to be humane mm. and for any palm colored person who's watching us right now if you want to do please tell us how do you sleep at night like generally whether you are and uh, I'd, like, I'd also like to know mm -hmm. for those ones who are watching and they, they may not be Jen Elliot for those mm -hmm. ones who are watching and they may not be Tim Wise and they don't support racism and the systemic injustices have you ever been in a situation where you had to speak up against something and, and did you and did you speak up or did you become frozen mm -hmm. which we can understand in some situations can lead you to freeze out but exactly what measures are you doing or to taking change the uh environment around, around you, you. Mm -hmm. yeah so guys let us know what you think about this episode and uh please if you are new to this channel and you've not subscribed also remember to subscribe to our channel right. and we'll see you on our next episode